Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of new campaign in Kazurudex in which we're playing as everyone's favorite mama leader, Mzi Onyango Obama. But we got to talk about the Jungle Stir's introduction to Red Kenya. As a crown jewel of the German Empire's colonial empire steadily falls deeper and deeper into instability, a great red beacon of freedom is formed deep in the heart of the Kenyan highlands. Once, what was once the stomping ground of the treacherous Schutztruppe has now become the foundation of a left-wing popular revolt against the German colonial oppressors in the name of liberation of the peoples of East Africa. The Mau Mau, as they would co become to be known as, were formed into a guerrilla fighting force from the impoverished farmers and working class poor of the Kikuyu, Embu, and Meru peoples of German East Africa. And while complacency might have been preferable in the early days of German colonial authority, the protracted economic slump within the Reich's colonies, combined with increasingly authoritarian administration of colonial governor general Heinrich Schnee, have driven the destitute and oppressed natives of German East Africa into the camp of leftist revolutionary Onyango Obama, a veteran of Britain's former colonial army turned African totalist charity, charter devotee, now the supreme commander of Kenya's fledging Red Army. All is not well in with the revolution, however, and the ad hoc nature of Obama's junta are quite outmatched by the superior training and equipment of the German security forces, and with the Red Army already in retreat from the advancing Germans, the future of the revolution is grim indeed. Obama the salvation of Kenya, what's life like? Also, you can skip ahead like a minute or two if you like to read about, uh, uh, or don't want to hear me reading about all the stuff, but Obama's Kenya. We've marched long and hard through the treacherous highlands and scorched deserts of Kenya as we spread the blazing inferno of rebellion across these lands. From the highest peaks of Mount Kenya to the rolling plains and scrublands of our base of operations in Wajir, the call of totalism of Obama echoes across our birthright. These lands were worked by our fathers and our fathers' fathers long before the white men first stepped foot on our dark continent. We know the nooks and crannies of this earth better than all, and have used this knowledge to help keep our popular movement alive, waging a brutal guerrilla war against those perfidious Europeans and their unending greed. We lie in our rocky fortresses and desert dens trapped like a cornered fox in its lair, ready to lash out and strike at any who would dare to try to divorce us from our lands. Our brave leader, the Grand Mzi Onyango Obama, guides our infantile instruction the best he can, shepherding our flock as we constantly take flight from the ever-pursuing Kenyan frontier forces. His near divine leadership has even inspired many to take worship of this Messiah of the Kenya worker, and savior to the people of Africa as a whole. As he leads the Mau Mau, our most fanatical and zealous brothers in arms, erect statues in his likeness, and create songs and hymns of his triumphs and deeds, slowly, creating a personality cult around the young revolutionary. A development he does not seem to condemn. They know the only that only under Obama's guidance will they ever have a chance of victory in this seemingly endless war. Our glorious supreme leader is the red sun that shall dawn over our new day in Kenya, serving as a great north star of the noble expedition, under his radiant red light. Obama will usher in the dawn of a better Kenya, a better Africa, one soaked in both the red glow of totalism and the dark stains of our enemy's blood. Only Obama can lead the way, but the Bush war continues. For 11 years, we have fought and bled to free Kenya. With <clears throat> the dawn of 1936, Obama has determined that this will be the last year of the Bush war. We will either be victorious or not be at all. Uh, in a bitter end resistance. Uh, we'll call a rebellion addicts, that's a conscription. Resistance to the bitter end. Uh, even though Obama had promised that we will fight uh, that we shall has a promise that we shall finally come to victory. In the possible scenario that we do lose, Obama has instated a backup plan. There is a resistance to the end plan. With this plan, we will never be able to taste defeat even if we lose coming great battle. The coming great battle. The fate of Middle Africa is destiny. Do we frustrations to allow our content to be ac accessed with ease? Well, I've added this old debug event that will guarantee the Middle Africa will either collapse or will survive in a specific run. Most of Middle Africa's politics, including the politics of all the constituent colonies and the post collapse states, are all locked behind the collapse. And as such, waiting all game for collapse that the AI might avoid can be frustrating waste of time. While well, the game room for MAF's collapse also exists, we've added this to ensure that people get the playthrough they want without RNG screwing them over. With that in mind, do you want Middle Africa to die? Keep that in mind, something yes won't cause MAF to instantly explode. It took some time and then the game happened. Technically, I'll be honest, I did set up the game. Oh wow, we're losing a lot of weekly stability. Holy crap. Um, I did set it up so that we would have it collapse anyway, so. The Mountain Deferred, oh boy. And the Mama Bush War, holy crap. Minus 1% stability? Holy smokes. The Bush War continues. 11 years, 11 long years. That's how long we've been fighting the white men. Things have changed over these years since the start of the revolt by our leader, the Great Obama. Since it was a British, but, you know, now. They follow the orders of a dark menace, the Germans. The people of Kenya and all of Africa squirm under their jackboots no more. That should be the final year. Either Kenya shall be ours or shall be not at all. Long live totalism, long live Obama. Long, we the Mau Mau's shall never stop resisting the white man. Death to the whites. Can I say that? We have no divisions. Blood and bullets. As the final battle approaches ever quicker, we acquire more arms. It's no secret that the Mau Mau are using highly outdated equipment. It is also no secret that we are quickly running out of bullets. In order to solve this, Obama's agreed an offer from a mercenary company based out of the Congo. They'll provide us with modern equipment. In exchange, we are to take out a few problem colonial administrators for them. While we may 
Well, some may scoff at this. Once they learn that Great Obama is the one who took the deal, they will be quickly be silenced. Resistance to the end. Brothers and sisters in arms, though the world outside has turned against us, we fight on. The Mau Mau have the spirit to fight the enemy to our last drop of blood. This resistance shall give no quarter to the colonial reactionaries who seek to destroy our leader, our salvation, Obama. The struggle will not end until Obama has led us to bring a lot of totalism to this part of the continent, or we die protecting our pride and people. Long live totalism and Obama, long live the Mau Mau. The, mon the mountain's final test. Mount Kenya, the great symbol of both the revolt and people, is a very powerful moving image of the minds of the Mau Mau for us. It shows that while oppression may come, it can never fully destroy people. The mountain has been here from the beginning and will be until the end. The mountain is also symbolic of the great mountain of the Mau Mau, Obama. He stands above us all, guiding us as a lighthouse sh guides ships at sea. Just as, as ship at sea, when the lighthouse goes out crashing against the rocks of the shore. <clears throat> so too will the Mau Mau crash without the guidance of Obama. The coming battle will be a great test for the mountain of o Mau Mau, but with the love of the people and the unity of totalism, there's no way the mountain will not be able to stand firm in the coming storm. And Black Monday? Oh boy. We can demobilize. We probably honestly will in the end, but... Close out of that one. Civilians elected in France. Railway system. Uh, Coming to civilian trains. We have no civilian trains. We don't. We don't even have Mau Mau carbides. Oh my goodness! Fourteen hundred days. Hmm. If you, sp if you spawn all three meme nations in the initial Kaiserreich event, which is done by choosing the options, I'm going crazy. Oh. And conquered all Bullets for blood and blood for bullets. Well, Ndegoi Niguru, he was a loyal soldier to the cause. The white man were simple devil's ass. As he moved along the patrol, a horseman came riding up to him. Do you know where your boss is, mate? He said to the mouth out in an accent, Ngur, following instinct, immediately pointing his rifle at him. The white man covered in a shimung, shimag, simply and calmly replied back. Do you know where your boss is? For long, the platoon commander of the Ngur unit came up. So do you have it? Right I do, the convoy is coming up soon, here's your next target. He said throwing a packet to the platoon leader. After the horseman rode out the platoon, or platoon, followed down the trail to where a stop convoy was, soon a white man came out and began loading into the last truck. Good luck with your little rebellion, mate, you'll need it. The man said waving his hands and drove away, as the moment Nagura questioned his platoon leader. Why are you taking arms from the white devils? And the leader replied back with venom. Who are you to question what our leader Obama mandated? Guns to the Mau must be acquired by any means. If they want to sell their rope to us by telling us which white man must die, then so be it. The leader said before hitting him on the head like a dog. Bullets at any cost. And a call it a rebellion. As we prepare for the final battle, we're going to need more men. To this end, Obama's a green lit a great propaganda campaign across Kenya. Obama himself is set to give himself or give a great radio speech. <clears throat> well, that shall be heard all around Kenya. Furthermore, a series of cover posters drops or poster drops shall be made. By the time we're done, all Kenyans shall know that the time has come. The light of Obama shall soon engulf all of Kenya. Nice. And I'll probably do this one because we all lose stability if we don't choose this one, so uh, I do I don't mind getting more political power. We are getting a good amount, but still. Passive army XP gain, not bad. We have no navy, of course, which makes sense. The mountain's final test. Side by the bad bustle of Nairobi. Atop the second tallest mountain that derives from the dark continent, Onyango Obama prepares for the coming storms. The first light of morning began to bathe the sky in his, in his red hue. Obama too rose to the summit of Mount Kenya. Staring out of the horizon, he beholds the vast expanse of the land around him, the spirit of humankind and birthplace of our species. Well, that's so pure and diverse in its life. With jungles deep and mystifying and mountain tops that stab into the sky, desperate to touch the gods above, this wondrous land is the birthright of all men and women on the green earth. And at this very moment, a perverse and twisted force rapes and pillages these lands for profit, greed, and a selfish personal game. The Europeans. These face to face demons lie and deceive with their promises of civilization and progress, and yet the land weeps under their every move and the people of Kenya suffer for it. They are downtrodden and abused, oppressed under harsh conditions, forced to toil and slave away just to have it to be stolen away in the markets of the white man. No, no longer. Obama thought to himself as he broke from his trance, staring at the blood red sunrise as the thoughts took flight. He knew what he had to do. He and his Mau Mau girls would free Kenya and cleanse this filth from the primordial lands. The light of totalism guiding them as the light of the dawn had guided his journey up the mountain. Obama knew that he would not falter in this fight. The mountain's final test was upon him, and he knew he would succeed for Kenya for totalism. The Mau Mau, with Obama as a guide, will never fall. Only Obama. Only totalism. Daily total support? We probably won't get that one first. Totalism. An ideology born not in the halls of some European college, but in the hearts of men who saw the corruption and vanity of cynicalism and the radical socialism. Totalism. It's the only acceptable idea of the white devil. Without the beauty and purity of totalism, Obama would not have been able to guide the Mau Mau with as much success as he has. Even before the totalism formalized in that blessed chart, Obama has been following it in his heart as totalism is not something that was invented. No. It is inscribed in the hearts of every true African by God, and every true Mau Mau warrior knows this. This is, Thus, it is only with totalism 
the greatest and highest of mankind's ideals that Africa can be freed. Only Obama. Obama, the very mention of his name causes our enemies to cringe and fear as they should. Obama the Great, leader of the Mau Mau, as the sole hope of Africa. It is only Obama with a wisdom far surpassing that of King Solomon who can, who can free not just Kenya but all of Africa. Only Obama can lead us, the Mau Mau's of the KFLFA, to victory. Long live Obama. Oh crap, did I forget the stability thing? Oh, I did, didn't I? Crap. Obama speaks so. There's a lot of wealthy, successful Kenyans who agree with me. Because they want to give something back. They know they didn't. So look, if you've been successful, you didn't get there on your own. You didn't get there on your own. I'm I'm always struck by the people who think, well, it must be because I was just so smart. There are a lot of smart people out there. It must be something or because I worked harder than everyone else. Let me tell you something. There are a whole bunch of hardworking people out there. If you were successful, somebody along the line gave you help. There was a great teacher somewhere in your life. Someone or somebody helped to create an, this unbelievable Kenyan system that we have allowed to, you to thrive. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you got a business, you ain't didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. The Telegraph didn't get invented on its own. Government research created the Telegraph so that all the companies could make money off the Telegraph. The point is, is that when we succeed, we succeed because of our individual initiative, but also because we do th things together. There are some things, just like fighting fires, we don't do on our own. I mean, imagine if everyone had, to fight, had their own fire service. That would be a hard way to organize firing fires. So, we say to ourselves, ever since the founding of the country, you know what, there are some things we do better together. That's how we'll free Kenya. That's how we'll defeat the Hutton. That's how we'll defeat a totalist nation. That's how we'll free all of Africa. We rise and fall together as one nation or as one people, and that's the reason I'm the soy, uh, salvation of Kenya, because I still believe in that idea. Me. You're not on your own. We're in this together, though. Only Obama can lead Kenya to freedom. We call it rebellion. This t the time of Africa's awakening is fast approaching, and with it, the junta of Obama's partisan force are calling up the children of the Dark Continent to take up arms against a German oppressor to end the stranglehold of European hegemony over the African people and what Obama's loyalists are calling the final battle for the soul of Kenya. Radio broadcasts blared out across the airways. The voice of Kenya's Red Army leader crackling throughout the dense jungles, evoking the names of the great uh, and mightiest of legends of Africa, from Mansa Musa to Yaansana Tewa to Shaka Zulu, Obama exalted the great warrior spirit of the African people now as then. The great next great trial of Africa was upon them. And now as then, it was Kenya's turn to claim the birthright from the shadows of the Reich. All over Kenya, posters and graffiti lined the alleyways, defacing statues even scrawled across the streets as major causeways. Bow not to the grifter in Washington, as the word screamed. Bow not to the butcher in Flanders. Bow not to the whore in Berlin, down with the Reich, down with the Goring, down Obama lives, Kenya lives, Africa lives. Stand up, brave Kenyan. Stand up and fight for Obama and totalism. I gotta not forget this one. I'm not even building anything. No, we're not. So there's no even point even having it right now, so... Let's just not lose any more stability and go with more physical power. Because we were on something else, but whatever. This guy's a real dude. But we don't get any benefits from that, huh? Alright. Who do we have here, actually? Hussein Obama. We lose political power. Henry Thuku. We get political power. Jaramogi Odinga. We lose political power. And Waruiu Itota. We get political power. Only totalism. Only totalism. Without totalism, we are nothing. Totalism is our plan for a pan-Africa, a pure unified state, clean from the whites. Without them, Africa shall advance with a thousand years into the future. Thus, we cannot permit the whites from abusing Africa with their evil influence. Only with the power of totalism can we finally cleanse our holy homeland from the white devils. Along with totalism, and only we can be the salvation of Kenya. The time has come. What preparations could be done have been done, undertaken, and we shall wait no longer. One more final battle, one for the soul of Kenya, is about to take place. If we are victorious, Kenya shall be free. With the bomb and totalism at the helm, if we fail. Great Obama says we'll keep fighting on, but how can we fail with Obama leading us? How can we fail? Well, you'd be surprised. Third International. France has gone through this designed to hold the first Congress of Third International. As we expect, we received an invite. It would be foolish not to send a delegation. Let's start packing. Only Obama. Without Obama. Well, there'll be no Africa. What happened? Why do we have so much political power now? Uh, without, without New Africa, we'll continue to be oppressed by the whites. We'll let brothers and stand with Obama, and Africa will be saved. We shall wash away white oppression through their blood, and all Africans who collaborate with the whites are caused righteous and blessed by God. Long live Obama. What happened? Is that in the army? Oh, we can't do both, dang it. Uh, whatever. Wait. Only totalism. Is that supposed to happen? Uh, okay, then. I'm going to assume we want more attack, maybe? Allocates a lot of command power. Which, I mean, I like using... Ooh, wow. That's not bad. And all this stuff as well. Um, They can't be manually, manually added or removed. Okay. Well, I mean, I want more offense, so we'll go with that guy. 
Destro Company, might as well grab these things then. Um, maybe we should save our stuff, but... Generic arms, why not? Maybe I shouldn't spend all this political power immediately. Wow, look at it. We get 2012 political power. Huh. And if you want to buy this one, please go ahead as well. These one too, please go ahead as well. RSDRP wins the Russian auctions. Okay. So then it goes in Spain. If you want to buy that, please go ahead. Nice. All right. All right. Who wins roll? Um, hardliners, huh? Uh, we'll do that one. All right, a little more command power now. I do want to get more like army stuff because army is going to be the, the most important thing we do here. So as much as I want this stuff, that's not bad. I ask for support, of course. I think I'll wait to get more artillery attack and defense, maybe. And it's just going to be bad. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, artillery is going to be good anyway. So there we go. We are just. Oh, if you want to do this one, the white terror. I, I thought it was like provide Africa, but no. Queen and the first government. Okay. So, what do I do with this political power besides hire more people? Mm. I do want to get the extra daily army XP gain. Screw it, let's do that one. Yeah, 2008. Oh, this is going to be 44. Poland falls in 2012. I wonder why they would have political power plus 2008 and 2012. Obama speaks in the Black Monday economic crash. We meet at a moment of great uncertainty for Kenya. The economic crisis we face is the worst in our modern history. Markets across the globe have become increasingly unstable. Millions of kings will open up their wallets this week and see that so much of their hard-earned cash has disappeared. Over three quarters of a million workers have lost their jobs this week alone. Unemployment here in Kenya is 85% over the last eight years, which is the highest it's been in 16 years. If you, you've lost one of every four manufacturing jobs, a typical Kenyan family has seen their incomes fall 50000 I'll bring down the cost of health care for families and businesses by investing in a preventative care, new technology, and giving every Kenyan the chance to get the same kind of health insurance that members of the colonial authority give themselves. We'll ensure every child can compete in the global economy by recruiting an army of new teachers and making college affordable for anyone who wants to go. We'll create 5 million new high-wage jobs by investing in the renewable sources of energy that will eliminate the oil we currently import from the Middle East in 10 years. And we'll create 2 million jobs by rebuilding our crumbling roads, schools, and bridges. It's a serious challenge, but we can do it if we act now and if we act as one nation. We can bring new air responsibility and accountability to Kenya and Nairobi. Together we cannot fall, or fail, not now. Now we have a crisis to solve and an economy to save. Not when there's so many Kenyans without jobs and without homes. Not when there are families who can't afford to see a doctor or send their child to college or pay their bills at the end of the month. Not when there's a generation that is counting on us to give them the same opportunities than the same chances that we have for ourselves. Now it falls to us, together. We cannot fa fail. Together we can overcome the broken policies and divided politics of the last 80 years. Together we can renew an economy that rewards work and rebuilds the middle class. Together we can create millions of new jobs and deliver on the promise of health care you can afford and education that, that helps your kids compete. We can do this if we come together, if we have the confidence in ourselves and each other. Have a look beyond the darkness of the day to do the bright light of hope that lies ahead. Together, we can change this country and change the world. Thank you, and remember, only totalism and only I can lead Kenya to freedom. Only Obama can save Kenya's economy. I wonder if that's been said before, I guess, in the future. Democratic coalition, oh, cheers. Uh, co Democratic coalition, what? The old bear, huh? The old bear. Oh, wait, there goes UBD. Goodbye, UBD. I don't know if we got it. Yeah. Maybe I might as well do that one, why not? Sorry, we got some ARXP. I'd rather use it before we get any more political power anyway, so whatever. The alien game's not terrible, too. Fear de tal, people killing each other? Pretty normal. Totally safe. Oh, that's not terrible. I mean, these guys are all not bad. They're all pretty much they're, they're similar. No chief of the Air Force. So I kind of want to see what happens, because I don't know what's going to happen with this one. Watson never changed. Gonna read that. Please go ahead. Quite an adventure. School defense max entrenchment plus ten is very strong. Obama speaks to the Mau Mau though. As a nation, we've had our shared debates about the Bush War. It's at times divided us as a people to this very day. There's some Kenyans who want to stay in the fight longer, and some who want to make peace. But there should be no disagreement on what the men and women of our military have achieved. And so I want to be very clear: we're fighting to do away with the Hun, and we'll do that. We'll leave the Kenyan people with a hard-earned opportunity to live a better life. That is your achievement. That is the prospect that you've made possible. There are many lessons to be learned from what we've experienced. 
We have learned that the Mal Mal must go to war with clearly defined goals. We have learned that we must always weigh the costs of the action and communicate those costs candidly to the Kenyan people. We have learned that in the 20th century, we must use all elements of Kenyan power to achieve our objectives, which is why I am committed to building our civilian national security capacity, so the burden is not continually pushed on to our military. We have learned that our political leaders must pursue the broad and bipartisan support that our national security policies depend upon, which is why I will consult with no other man when carrying out my plans, and we have learned the importance of working closely with friends of allies, which is why we are launching a new era of engagement in the Bush War. Starting point, our policies must always be, be is always the freedom of the Canadian people. I know that you, the men and women of the finest fighting force in the history of the world, can meet any challenge and defeat any foe, and as your commander in chief, I promise that I will only send you into the harm's way when it's absolutely necessary, and provide you with the equipment and support you need to get the job done. That's the most important lesson of all, for the consequences of war or dire, the sacrifices are measurable. You know, because you've seen those sacrifices, you have lived them and we honor them. Each Kenyan who has served with the Mal Mal has their own story, each of you has your own story, and that story is now part of the history of the Kenyan people, a people that exists only because free men and women have bled for it from the beaches to the deserts, from the mountains to the streets. You see, teach us that the price of freedom is great, your sacrifice could challenge all of us, every single Kenyan, to ask what we can do better about, uh, what we can do to be better citizens. There will be more danger in the months ahead. We will face new tests and unforeseen trials, but thanks to sacrifice to those who have served, we have forged hard-earned progress, and we will drive the hunt from this land and shall have peace. Thank you. May the light of totalism lead us to victory. Only Obama can bring peace to Kenya. Absolutely. Never enough. Uh, Army XP. Death TG Masayark. Obama musters. As the gunfire rattles outside of town, Obama knew that he couldn't win, but he knew he must fight for Africa, his ally. Uh, in the revolution, and one of the youngest soldiers, Didan Kimothi, uh, came up to leader Obama. There's enough, Obama replied back. Enough for what we're planning, comrade. Kimothi reached out his hand to Obama, grabbed it, pulling him up on his horse, and ran towards his troops. Obama quickly got off the horse and on his own and rode in front of his men. Comrades, these seem to be our final days of men chant. The Mau Mau's would never end for several times before Obama got them to quit. Over the last couple years, we've learned, I've learned, that change can only come from the bottom up for the oppressed peoples of Africa. We Mau Mau's have built a model community that served to make the people's lives better. The men were exact, ready, and willing to die for Obama. He quickly orders them into the form formation. Fitzgerald had taught them in the days before the battle. With a single word interrupted only by the white man trusted by Obama and Kamathi, F. Scott Fitzgerald, so he decided to stick with us. The Germans will have you hanged and quartered like the rest of us, shouted Obama to the journalist that had once been the prisoner. Though these past few months I have been your brother, let me ride with my brothers just one more time. Fitzgerald said to Obama and his men, then ride with us, join us in battle, one more time. Obama smiled now with Fitzgerald at their side that they could probably keep the formation together for contact with the Germans. With a single word, the posse rode down towards the lands. Together as a brave new band of revolutionary wars destined to free Africa. Oh boy. The Great Battle. As Obama charged forward on the horse, his men fought in the fields and the houses and the streets. Well, she became a pot of water boiling over and then some. The Mau simply wouldn't leave their home without a fight. The fighting was some of the bloodiest Africa had seen, breaking the Mau Mau's back, sending them fleeing to Mau Mau, Mau Forest and the mountains of J Kenya. This wouldn't be the end for them. Too many have escaped to fight the Germans another day. A bubble badly wounded from the charge. He managed to find himself at the horse ranch where they prepared that attack. He had he hid inside his barn trying to lay low until he could escape back to men. Sadly enough, the Germans weren't as stupid as he thought. Soon a whole platoon had gathered as he knew this was going to happen. He didn't want to believe it. She made it a disappoint Didan, his most loyal follower, but hopefully he'll take charge of the moment that, as he made him promise to do. It was time Obama was ready to meet his final doom. Before he would meet his end, he was determined to bring down as many as he could. Drawing his C-96, he fired off multiple shots he knew he hit, but he didn't know how many had died. Uh, SMLE took uh, him into the next life, martyred by the oppressors of Africa for freedom of all of Africa. The two somehow managed to escape the massacre. Before long, Obama had stopped running to catch his breath. That took over some cover before long. Before long, Didan spoke to him. So this is how we plan to end: dying in some forgotten town. Didan angrily said at him. Obama quickly replied, "Everything's coming together exactly as I planned." Didan merely was confused. How the heck is this coming together? What a bigger mess than before! Don't worry. For now, we need to split up. They're still following us. Obama interrupted Didan's questioning. We'll talk about this again. The writing's not bad. It's just a little hard to read. An end to the Bush War. It's a dark day for the Mau Mau. We have suffered a great loss, and worse yet, our leader Obama is missing and presumed dead. Young Didan Kimothi, the right hand of Obama, stepped up to lead her movement in his darkest hour. Kimothi claims to carry on Obama's will, and has taken his infant son, Barak, along with what remains of our forces to lick our wounds. Though he assures us we will avenge our fallen leader and brothers, even the most proud words of the Mau Mau can't help but ask themselves, is this the end? No, they answered, it's only the beginning. Oh. Oh. The Second Mau Mau Uprising The Mau Mau were risen up once again. Despite our best efforts to quell the revolt, the Mau Mau were able to see several key areas and were declared a second uprising. At their helm was a seemingly resurrected Obama, who seems more insane than normal. The government response to be swift 
Has to be swift, otherwise we might fall against rebellion. Oh no! What's gonna happen when I do this? Oh no, they lost all their divisions! Oh no! Actually, oh, this is really cruel to do. But whatever! Death to the Imperialist Dogs! Oh, I didn't do anything bad there at all. We have five divisions. Oh, Musa Mawariyama. Hey, at least we got people here we can use. Um, everyone's politically connected, which sucks, but Skull Staffer, why not? Do we have any field marshals? Dedan Kimathi. Oh, yeah, welcome back. Oh, that's not bad. Stanley Mathenga. And Ze Onyango Obama. We have to use Obama here. So, who are we fighting? Oh, the entire... Oh, my gosh. The entire Reich's Pact? Uh... I'm going to assume these guys, right? Oh, we, we're not even touching them, though. Do you have any upgrades? Yeah, it'll be offensive. Oh, we got 2,000 manpower. Or political power, I mean. Alright, so, the second great uprising. Though Obama's initial uprising was eventually snuffed out and driven back to the mountains and wastes of the Kenyan's wilds, it was not a total failure. It planted the seeds of rebellion in the hearts of the Kenyan people now, in the dying moments of Middle Africa. We shall once more raise our arms against the crowd. The future is uncertain and chaos surrounds all. But the second mile map, revolution shall not falter until all of Kenya is, of course, saved. My apologies about that, but my cat was, uh, like, clawing the carpet outside my door, so. Uh, push from the mountain. Not bad. Gather new guns. If we were to arm the ever-growing number of revolutionaries, I continue to flood into our ranks, or even supply the ones we already had. New weapons of war will be needed. However, we have no industry except for the new fa few factories. Captured from the colonizers and our local gunsmiths. We must perform raids deep into the enemy territory to steal weapons while also working to contact black market sources like the Sanusi Order or the Triads to requisition more arms. Push from the mountain. Mount Kenya is both the great symbol of our revolt as well as a serious self for a revolutionary government. With much of the mountain hiding tunnels and redoubts staffed with the brave KFLA militias, taking our knowledge of this terrain into account, we shall launch surprise attacks from the Kenyan highlands, waging a brutal guerrilla war against Nairobi and other major colonial holdouts to that border of the mountains. We're gonna bleed them dry! Even though, I'm not really sure if we can do very much. I mean, we're going to obviously take this territory, but... Ah, Kampala, let's go, let's go, let's go! Oh, we're down here too. Ah, the Congo Verstadt is doing... Uh, they're doing. We're not fighting them, are we? No, they're fighting them as well, so that's good. Oh, also, American Civil War has, of course, fired. And it's kind of a mess, so... Eh, pretty normal, though. Anything else going on? Spain, since it's Civil War. You know, Ukraine, huh? Basil. Oh, maybe I should play them sometime. Hmm. By Khrushchev into the government, dissolve the Rada. Even though I have played them, I think, in Kaiser Reich before, but I don't think Kaiser Redux. It's been a while since I played as Ukraine, so. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Move, 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 move. My boys, my boys. Ah. Uh, we could. I'm not sure how much we could actually get done. Jubalan? Nice. And of course, I hate militia because they're just not fun to use. Ooh, actually, ooh, we go total mobilization. Um, I don't want to go any, anything beyond extensive, really. So there's power requirement, but let's go. Let's go to at least a uh, war economy, and slowly try to get more uh, political power that way. It, we don't get. Oh, very nice, Mombasa. I don't trust these guys down here in Goringa. So, oh, that's a nice flag they got there. Buganda. Daudi Siwa the second. All right. What do you guys yes on them? George Val Oh Consequences are surefire. Oh, wait. What happened? What uh, wait what? Cerulean's but they're totalists. Wait, what happened here? Peace conference. What who's piecing out? Oh we're piecing out with Ah Nice. Uh death of our leader. France is on the brink of complete anarchy. Nice. So, who are we still fighting? North Rhodesian. Nice. Oh! The collapse of Middle Africa. Very cool. I'll just take all the pain. Thank you. The people of Africa long for freedom from imperialism. Nice. Hey, we got a factory! Yay! Oh, wait, we have two types of carbines. Mau Mau Weaponry. Versus basic, well, 20 and 2, 10 and 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 0 0.01, 3, 0.5, 4 max speed, 0.5 piercing, 10% reliability, 10% oh, reliability, is that really 10%? Production cost is way cheaper, but, yeah, no, we gotta go with basic infantry equipment at the very least. 
Don't even bother with, uh, with this type of mom out carbine. Okay, then. Uh, reorganize railroad system? No. Railroad store in the White Highlands. Uh, Kinusu has long been famous as some of the most fertile land in all of Africa. Nurtured into this cradle of human humankind we call home by Teutonic forces and flowing currents, among the most fertile land lies within the now infamous White Highlands, a section of Kenya's mountainous, rugged terrain within the central uplands that surround the city of Nyeri. For decades, Anglo and Krat colonizers and settlers have raped and defiled the land, draining the soil of its natural fertility within years of their arrival, while for centuries before them, pastoralists like the Kikuyu and the Maasai tended to this tended to this pristine Eden without issue. In their hands, the land was nurtured and cared for while in the hands of the maniacal Europeans. Kenya has instead been led to ruin. The Europeans, in their impatient civilizing efforts, have caused a fertility crisis on a scale we have never seen before, and in doing so, have ushered in a terrible famine upon our people as they relieve themselves on uh, exports from Berlin. Luckily, their reign has been toppled and these issues can finally be faced. With the triumphs of the KLFA, on the return of the land to our skilled farmers' hands, the White Highlands will be restored to its former glory. He ordered the greed fueled damage and Imperial's dogs have wrought upon it. Only true, knowledgeable Kenyan farmers shall work these hallowed lands now, and by their hand the White Highlands will s shall slowly be revitalized. We shall restore this Eden, wiping it clean of the colonizer's taint. Kenya won it undivided. After decades of struggle against rival powers and European imperialism, Kenya now stands proud and free as whole of its sovereign nation. The Bantu people of our kin and our land of our ancestors have been unified under one flag, one man, one idea. They're our shepherd in these dark times, Nze Onyango Obama, has been the beacon to which all within Kenya has turned to, and under his guidance our people and our history have been saved under Obama. Our once fractured national identity has been reforged and strengthened beyond compare, and these new bonds shall become the foundations of our new future. So let's pull together as we face our destiny. Harambe, harambe, harambe. Oh, we lost our territory. Gosh darn it. Oh, bro, that sucks. Demobilize, we'll do that eventually. Chilean Argentinian War. Um, we go. You know what? Are we de. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of map. Holy crap. To only totalism. Ex oh. Revisionist pariah. Only totalism is nice. Only Obama. And then unconventional army is. That's terrible. I like military factories, but terrible for defense. Holy crap. Hardliners still going up every day. Ooh. Anything else we do here, maybe? Um, army XP. Yeah, I mean, we don't really need more naval XP. We can always get that over here, so we'll probably want to go with the army XP. Gather new guns, of course. Fourth Balkan War, very cool. And push from the mountains. So I figured we didn't really need this one too badly. Is, it, is there anything in first place, folks, we know? Oh, Mau Mau. Well, so we'll read this one. A recent book for the famous author. American author F. Scott Fitzgerald hits the shelves today. Fitzgerald had published a new piece after returning from a vacation in West Africa. He embarked in 35. This middling piece of literature talks about all. <clears throat> about a small yet vicious bush war between the German governor of the Canyon and the Mau Mau. It goes on about Mau Mau's tactics and ideals, or later Onyonga Obama, and Obama's personal involvement in the rebellion, which critics state, state are quite dubious. Overall, this book isn't a big sun, just as the bad reputation Obama seems to have earned in the colonies. What do you think he is? A, a, a white savior? Yeah, let's go with that one. Not bad. Demobilizing a whole bunch, but... Hmm. Oh, actually, we have divisions here. That's not terrible. For these guys, KFLA Rebels 2. Just fine. Cavalry, which I, we actually might want to use, actually. Mountaineers are not bad, too. Uh, let's grab one of these horses, because we're going to need one, and then go with two of these guys. Not bad. Ah, cool. More army XP. I want to max out army XP as fast as possible. And then we'll demobilize eventually. But we ooh, can we actually build anything here. There goes the left KMT. Goodbye. Punta. I've never played a South America before. And Casa Redux. Then again, I don't ever play a South America generally in general, so. After that, end the colonials. <clears throat> The remaining col colonists, too foolish and unfortunate to be able to escape our nation, began to group up. Farming concentrated pockets of resistance from these pockets, they still work to infest our lands and subdue our people. All in the pursuit of imperialist and capitalist gain, of course. We shall wipe these holdouts from the map one by one, leaving not a single Anglo crowd or any other foul Mungzugu alive. Nice. A race dominionist Kenya. The foul scent of the Anglos and their dead empire permeates everywhere, with even influence from the Kaiserreich forced to bask in the shade of the British dominance here in Kenya. This horrific level of infection from the perfidious Brits will not be tolerated any longer as our administration moves to take immediate action towards limiting and eliminating any and all traces of the Dominionists and their imperialist cohorts. We take our rifle lamb. 
Uh, to the north lies Jebalam, a uh, pristine valley inhabited by our people. Descendants of the Bantu speak our native tongue of Swahili, who partake in all the same customs and traditions we hold dear. We must approach the Somali overlords who now rule over the Jebel Valley for all the Kenyans belonging in Kenya. Fate of Uganda. Uganda broke off of the now dead free state during the initial chaos of the Middle African collapse, however. Despite the new Jewish, uh, Jewish Suzerians, much of the populations are still Africans. Sons and daughters of the great Bantu civilization that has stretched across East Africa for millennia. We must decide on what our position against this new state shall be before another post collapse power beats us to it. Which is very, very true. So, we're still guarding over here, but we'll see what happens with these guys. I do want to get Jobaland, so. Oh, there goes Co Congo. And they're all having a great time with each other. Yeah, th yeah, a totally great time. Totally great time. These guys are 18 combat with, but these guys are 18 combat with as well. So, not bad. Uh, oh, not looking good on Gunzo, though. No. Yeah, that's looking pretty bad, actually. But hopefully we can do well. Basic infantry equipment. Better than nothing, I guess. We do have 80 army XP already, which is pretty decent. So, and I love how Obama has a uh, um, eye patch and glasses and stuff, so. Only through Obama can we be saved. So hopefully we can get these guys too. Le Lionel de Rothschild. You say Rothschild, I'm thinking, hmm. Unconventional army, is that like us? Yeah. I follow Burgos. Well, so be it. So flippin' be it. <clears throat> Here's the Balkan War, the, Ger the Germans. The Bulgarians are holding out. For the most part, they have given up a little bit of land, but not bad so far. Oh, wow. Oh, Switzerland lost a lot of territory. The Swiss state, huh? Now the national populace, Eugene Berger. Yeah, I'd be pretty pissed off, too. Wow, 20%. Oh, 2%. That's not 20%. Active Dienst. Political institution is not bad. Oh. Take our rightful land. Fate of Uganda, and we'll do the fate of Kenya, too. Wait. What? Oh, I, want, I, want, I want our territory, but, uh... To strike at these guys, leave the future of Kenya. Well, the heartland of Kenya restored to the hands of native rule. The Kenyan land and freedom army with Malamal stand triumphant over the imperialist dogs. With their enemies scattered and the former master sent packing or sent six feet in the dirt, the future Kenyan notes now be decided. The leadership of the Malamal is beginning to crumble as personal ambitions replace revolutionary unity. The question over who shall lead Kenya in the coming weeks is now flux, for no one is certain now. So, do we not get this or what? Oh. Somalia refuses. The naive uh, follow that run the Somalian government of ignored our ultimatum over the turn of the Juba Valley. The weather has been out of bravery or stupidity, our regime does not know. Regardless, we are now left with a choice. We can either ride the Kenyan land and freedom army, or, or, or and driving into the black art of Mogadishu to return the land stolen from us, or shall we simply back down? A better time. What shall be your course of action? We go straight to war. At the very least, we're going to take all this stuff, so... Take up as much of it as possible, and maybe divide them up if we have to. At the very least, we will definitely take this though. Let's go in. Ethiopia? Um, no, we're good for now. Mm, just don't get circled, guys. That's a good horse division here too, that's pretty good too. Ooh. Well, let's see, civilian oversight, and we'll go with cavalry. Fate of Uganda, and the future of Kenya. At the very least, help them defend the Red Flood if you want to build that place, go right ahead. Nice. Well, I guess that's the only way we can go. We try it. Gotta go total mobilization, but I think we'll be okay. Nice. Put that division back. Keep holding out. If anything, you should help actually help attack, maybe? Fate of Uganda. And let's continue with Grand Battle Plan? Um, yeah, I'll probably go Grand Battle Plan for this one. Kamathi at the helm. Magentha's new order. I think we'll probably... I mean, I'm sure someone doesn't want to go with Obama, but I kind of want to go with Obama just because 
Why not? A tour of the, to the promised land. In the chaos of the Middle African collapse, a former co-colony of the now defunct Kenyan Ugandan Free State broke off from Kenya, taking with them a bulk of the political infrastructure built by the Germans and British. Oh, ahem. <clears throat> uh, British along with them. Now Uganda stands largely independent, ruled by a Jewish dynasty of businessmen and pseudo nobles. The Rothschild who carved out a new land of milk and honey here in the heart of East Africa. Our administration, now largely healed from the wounds of its fiery birth, is left with a choice. Either we can ignore these children of God or their own devices, or we can banish these Judean Mungzugu, just as we did with the European colonizers who played the King Highlands. What should we proceed with? <clears throat> Hold on. We have to make a decision now? We honestly can't really afford a war with them right now. Or, well, there's only two tiles. We could rush out the divisions pretty quickly. And just hold the line as best as possible. Coop some of the gun cost, maybe. Or we're trying to finish these guys off too. Yeah, there's a chance it could work. You guys aren't going to be that weak, though. State of Israel, Uganda. Well, let's save just in case. I mean, we are defending the hills, at least down here, but... And depending on how many divisions they have, you might be able to just walk in. Probably not, in all honesty, but we'll see. Oh, crap. Okay, no, no, hold on. Is this mountains or something? Ah. I kind of figured as much. Come on, guys, help, hurry up. Honestly, just go to the mountains down here. It, it'll make it easier for us, so. Don't attack, don't attack. Oh, is that open? No, that's that's a river there, so. Oh, wait, what? How can they get over there? What? Come on. That's so stupid. How are you guys losing against these guys? Future Kenya. Preemptive strike at Goring, yeah? Or Goring? Goring sits atop a throne of skulls in Dar es Salaam. Perched in his ridiculous castle, playing emperors, he crushes his true sons and daughters with Africa under his boot. This must not be left to stand. The leaders of the Bantu, the lands of the Bantu, must be clean of all foreign taint. At least we get a lot of army XP. We'll see what happens. I mean, these guys are really weak, but they should be able to hold out. At least in theory. You should be learning quite a bit. Um, Alright, so at this point, I want you guys to hold. I need you over here immediately. And if this doesn't go well for us, well, then I'm going to uh, probably do some fucking stuff off screen. Because I want to make sure we do well. This is kind of stupid how <clears throat> we're not doing well right now. It's honestly really stupid how like these guys up here aren't doing well at all. Like, it doesn't make any sense. How's Ethiopia losing? A clash of times above the clouds. It was a cool night. The star, uh, clear star-filled sky showed the expanding cosmos as the light of the full moon illuminated the highlands of Kenya's heartland. Rising above it all, threatening to pierce the sky itself, stood Mount Kenya. On those mountain years ago, Obama, Kamathi, Amon, Tonga, and many others first congregated, swearing loyalty to one another as they both birthed the KFLA and sparked the fire of the Mau Mau Revolution to life. Now, Mr. Obama sat at the top its peak, meditating on his people's victory and the counting trials ahead, and so he thought. For all his victories and triumphs, Obama still held one great failure in his heart, the loss of the students' respect. For his two protégés, one had grown long tired of Obama's empty platitudes and haughty proselytizing, Stanley Matanga, once heir apparent to the Mau Mau in Obama's absence, had long fallen second to Dedan Kamathi, current second in command and near son of the Grand Nze, over Matanga's own prediction for a more traditionalist and nationalist views on most of the issues the KLFA has faced. 
With these disagreements having been formed, a schism between the Tay's titans of Kenyan political affairs, Matanga's bitterness and resentment over his former master, has festered and grown, and now he stalks his aging mentor like a jaguar hunting his prey. As Obama sits in me mediation or meditation, listening to his inner thoughts as the howling winds of his stormy peak clear his mind and conceal his would-be assassin's tracks, Matanga has slowly crept up the mountaintop and now stands just meters from the Grand Mitsai's trinkle form. As the young fire ramp begins to step forward, However, Twig Snap enters his footfall, a blunder forced on by his own over-eagerness and readiness to strike, alerted the Prophet who immediately leaped to his feet, drawing his knife and readying his counter to Matanga's rush. Within moments, the two titans were at each other's throats, exchanging slashes and jabs in a fierce display of force as they battle for the spirit and future of Kenya itself. As the fight dragged on and the howling winds turned into a torrential storm, these two demigods of Kenyan idealism were close to exhaustion as their battle drew near to the end. In one final effort, both wars charged with each other, the winner proving to be whomever could draw the blade the quickest. In a flash that struck with the rolling thunder and lightning of this alpine storm, blow was drawn and a body fell. Kenya could only one Mitsa, one prophet, and that man proven to be Obama, truly, oh, the guy can never truly die. This is dumb. I hate the supply system now. Like, it's so annoying seeing this, working with this. I really do not like this at all. I mean, it makes sense and all, but still, I hate how this has turned out. Here, go in here. I should go here. Yeah, I'll go here first. Oh, come on. You're gonna force defense. Let's circle and kill them off. I mean, I'd love to just take the territory, but apparently we just can't win here, so... Uh, honestly, you might be able to just... You might be able to do that, maybe? Or just hold. Just hold for now. Yeah, they get supplies, and yet we don't. I mean, that's stupid. That's incredibly stupid. Oh, come on. Yeah, I, I, if I have to use consequence, I'm, I don't care. Like, yeah, we're going to have to use consequence. This is stupid, and I'm going to fix this off-screen because this is just not very well made. But I'm going to finish that off-screen. After that one, we'll probably do Obama right on. Oh, young Obama's called the tempestuous storm that brewed against the inner workings of the KFLA. Arriving on the other side of this internal struggle emboldened and inspired more than ever before. On his continued leadership, all of Africa will feel the red glow of Obama's total dream and a new dawn. With the dust settled on the ash clearing, one clear victor now stands above the rest of the internal struggle for the power within the KFLA. Now the government once again coalesced around one key figure, the mama of the prophet once more. Now together, the newly reforged and reborn KFLA shall march into a new dawn, finally free from this imperial chains that have bound them for centuries. Harambi. But I'm going to definitely fix this up off screen because this is just stupid. I mean, if we're going to have, like, a totalist, like, empire, like, why? Why is everyone else so flippin' strong? Why the heck is Somalia so god awfully strong? That makes literally no sense. But if you enjoyed the video, regardless, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow after I've destroyed Somalia completely, who should be losing further. But thanks for watching, and see you later.